y'all? Are some y'all here? Over here? Hey, everybody. Really happy to be out tonight. I had a really strange week. Like something happened to me earlier. Someone walked up to me, and they just flat out told me, Captain, you look like one of those kids that goes on Xbox Live Chat and just screams racial slurs. <laughs> First off, that is a really weird thing for a high school guidance counselor to be telling a student. And secondly, I was like offended at this, because I don't. I have a PlayStation. I'm really glad people laughed at that. Because I do that joke in rooms with like older people sometimes, and they don't seem to get it. They like take it the wrong way. They're like, we don't know what a PlayStation is, but we love racism. And they enjoy the joke in the wrong tense. I did that joke in Ocala once, and they did not laugh at all. They agreed, but they didn't laugh at all. The guy was like, I have an Atari, and I still say that. I'm like, Atari doesn't have online. You're just screaming racial slurs at the TV. That's par for the course in Ocala. This summer was a weird thing for me, too. Like, I wrote a letter to a girl over the summer, because uh, she went to a summer camp, and she asked me to send her a letter while she was there. But that's not the real reason I sent the letter. The real reason I sent the letter is I wanted to see what they had to go through in the 1800s to get some pussy. I got really carried away with the letter, too. Like, I wrote the whole thing in cursive. I don't even know cursive. I started it off by saying, I apologize for the lustful tone of this letter. But you must understand that it has been more than a fortnight since my last sexual conquest. Probably doesn't help that she went to a Christian camp and she had to read her letter out loud. Yeah, she doesn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> Wouldn't be funny as I guess she talks to me all the time. She's like, oh my god, that's so romantic. That's fun, man. I like living here in Central Florida. The main reason I like living here is because we have a lot of diversity, which I think is great for somewhere. Because having that diversity means we're subject to a lot of things that other people aren't. Like, for example, in Central Florida, when you turn on the radio, what do you hear? You hear, Accidentes Orlando, you matter cuatro, seis, siete, siete, uno, siete, seis, 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 Accidentes Orlando. Go now. Like, we hear that and we think nothing of it, right? Imagine if people in Alabama heard that. Yeah. They'd hear that ad over the radio, like, oh, please, just get the gun, we're getting attacked by aliens. <laughs> Crazy part is they wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> Any big weed smokers in here? Any anyone smoke weed? <laughs> I don't smoke weed, uh, personally. Uh, it's because I'm a good person. <laughs> I think weed's a really cool thing, though, actually. I think, I think it's fascinating that weed has become, like, basically normalized over the past 10, 20 years. And I was explaining this to my friend the other day, and he was trying to argue with me about it. He's like, oh, man, weed's too illegal, blah, blah, blah. And I gave him two examples of how he's wrong. The first example I gave him, I told him about the actor Jaleel White. I don't know if you guys know him, he plays Steve Urkel on TV. He just came out with his own strain of weed called Purple Urkel. That is a completely real thing he just came out of. I know some of you are high on it right now. But he branded weed. Like, you don't see other celebrities doing that with other drugs, right? You don't see, like, Charlie Sheen's cocaine. Like, you don't, you don't see that. The slogan on it would be like, for those days that you're not winning, you know. <laughs> and the second example I gave him, it's a little bit more out there, so you might have to bear with me. But I said, you know when you're walking through the mall and you see those terribly airbrushed t-shirts with like a pot leaf on it and Snoop Dogg? You don't see one next to it with like a spoon and Demi Lovato on it, right? It's... <laughs> The room was a little split on the heroin joke. Uh, one person clapped for the heroin joke. One person said, fuck Demi. And I 
love heroin. Like, I don't know. It's all, it's all good and fun. Uh, women kind of confuse me, because I, I feel like every girl I've gotten with has been hypocritical in some way. Like recently, um, I hooked up with a girl, and afterwards we were talking, and she's like, Oh my god, men are such dogs. I wish I had a man that didn't act like a dog. And I was like, Five minutes ago, you asked me to put my face in your ass. <laughs> and now you're saying you don't want a dog? <laughs> hey, I don't know about you, but that's some canine activity. <laughs> I think you want a dog. And then I started barking at her and it got weird. How are you doing, sir? You like to party? You got those glasses. Those are party glasses. You do cocaine? <laughs> only when he's sleeping. What does that even mean? <laughs> the only reason I ask that is because I'm trying to sell out the show. <laughs> Comedy's not working out too well for me. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna get up out of here soon. I'm, I'll tell one more get out of here. But before I do that, uh, I'm very desperate for Instagram followers, so I please ask you guys follow me on Instagram <laughs> at captain.right. That's captain.wrighd. I'll leave you with this last thought. Um, I used to watch a lot of TV. One of my favorite shows was CSI. I used to watch the shit out of that show. But then I realized something stupid that they do in every episode, and that is like whenever they show a crime scene, there's always some cop in the background going like, "Move it along, nothing to see here." There's always something to see there. That's probably the worst thing you can say too to direct your attention towards someone, something else. There's always something cool to see, like a dead clown in a dumpster, a bag full of kitten pens, Mike Pence getting blown by a dude. Something cool to see. 